So in this question, we have a 20 millimeter diameter A36 steel, which has a uh, shear modulus of 75 gigapascals shaft, and it's subjected to the torques that are shown. We need to determine the angle of twist of end B. So if we look at the diagram, this is point B, the end point of the shaft. So we're going to need to figure out how much it twists on the end and where it's inferring relative to the point A where it's attached to the wall. All right, so the thing we're looking for is angle of twist and there's equa an equation sorry, that we can use for that. So phi, our angle of twist, is equal to the sum of TL divided by JG. And we're doing a sum because it's going to be applying this equation uh, for each section um, of our shaft. So if we look along here, all right, we're going to have a new section every time we have a change in loading. So we'll have a section, we get a change here, so we're going to form a new one through this part. We have another change, so we're going to get a new one again. So essentially three sections that we're going to need to look at. So I could rewrite this in terms of those three sections. So TL on JG for... All right, let's go for the first section, which is BC, plus TL on JG for the next section, which I'll call CD. And then we'll have one last one for, this is DA. All right, so T in this equation is the torque that's applied through the section. So we're going to need to determine that, and there's two different methods for figuring it. One is to draw yourself a free body diagram and then perform cuts uh, through each of the different sections to find the internal torque. The other option that you have is to draw yourself a torque diagram, and then from the diagram you can read off what the torque is for each section. So let's start with actually doing that um, for each of them. So I'm going to draw myself a free body diagram of the torques applied to the shaft. And let's call this end here B. Um, so then we're going to have like a point C, D, and A. And I'm going to say that we're going to measure from, uh, I'll go from the left here along. That's going to be our X direction. So using a right hand rule, you put your thumb in the direction of that X direction. So on this diagram, it's going to be back up this way corresponds to X, and the direction your fingers point tells you the positive direction uh, for the rotation. So this one here, I think that's going to be in the positive direction, so I'm going to draw it like this on the diagram. The double-headed arrow um, tells me it's a torque, not just a force. So this is going to be 20. If I look at the next one, I think it's pointing in the negative direction, so I'm going to draw it back this way, and that will be 60. The next one, I think it's back in the positive direction. So that one's 80. And on the end here, there's gonna to have to be a torque provided at the wall to keep this thing in equilibrium. If there wasn't, then this thing would uh, try and actually spin on itself. So I'm gonna guess the direction. I'm gonna guess back this way, and I'm gonna call it T sup. Now we should be able to figure out um, what this support reaction is because we know it's in equilibrium, i.e. not spinning. So the sum of the torques would have to be equal to zero um, for it to not move. So applying it to our diagram, we're going to get 20 in the positive direction, minus 60 plus 80 minus the T-sup is equal to zero. So if we simplify these numbers together, it's going to be negative 40 plus 80. So that would be 40 overall. So that means our support torque, or torque at the support, is going to end up being 40, and it comes out positive, which means the direction was correctly drawn, so it is to the left. If it had to come out negative, then it would have been the other way around. Alrighty, so now that we've got um, each of these um, filled in on our diagram, we should be able to draw ourselves the torque diagram, which plots the internal load, or internal torque, I should say, um, along the beam or shaft. All right, so this is our zero line, and at the beginning of our um, diagram, we know it has to start at zero, but immediately we're going to get pushed upwards because it's in the positive x direction. I'm considering that up 20 newton meters. Okay, so we're going to end up here. Label that as 20. All right, nothing happens through here, so it's going to remain flat. And then we hit this point where a, a 60 newton meters is applied and it's going to be in the negative direction. So it's going to push us downwards. 
So we were at 20. If we take 60 off, it's going to take us to negative 40. So again, we keep going along. There's nothing happening through this section. So it's going to remain steady until we reach the 80. Okay, so now we're going to end up shooting back up because it's in the positive direction. And if we're at negative 40 and we add 80 on, that's going to take us to 40 in total. So we keep going all along here. Nothing's happening until we reach the end. And we see that we've got 40 in the negative direction. And that's going to take us back down to zero, which is what we were expecting. Let me just neaten that up. It should be straight. Okay, so we're starting and ending the diagram at zero, which is what we uh, want. If that doesn't happen, then something has gone uh, weird. Okay. So from this, we should now be able to figure out the torque um, that's happening internally for each of our sections. So the torque through section BC, that's this part here. So oh, you see. So we can read that off as being equal to 20 uh, Newton meters. Down here, all right, this is corresponding to CD. And we've got this as being a negative, which means it's torque that's being applied in the opposite, or the internal torque is in the opposite direction. Okay, so it's being twisted the other way. So that's fine, I'm going to carry across our, our negative. And then this last one here, that corresponds to the section DA. And we've got this as being 40 Newton meters. Again, I'm going to keep it sign, okay, because that's telling me uh, which way it's actually turning. So now I should be able to go back and look at my equation for uh, the angle of twist. And what I'm going to find is that we have the torques for each section now. These L's represent the length of each section. So we've got that directly off the diagram here. And J, all right, that's something I'm going to need to calculate. So I might do that next. So J is going to be the polar moment of inertia. And it's related to the cross section of our shaft. And we were told that our shaft has a 20 millimeter diameter and it's solid. Um, so we should be able to use that information to calculate J. And since the shaft has got the same cross section the whole way along, uh, each of these J values is going to be consistent um, for, for each section. So if I draw myself a diagram, all right, this is my cross section. And we've been told it has a diameter of 20 millimeters. Okay. So if you look up a table, you should be able to find the equation for J based on this cross-sectional shape. And in fact, it becomes pi on 2, R to the power of 4, where R is the radius of your cross-section. So in our case, the diameter is 20, which means the radius in here is going to be 10 uh, millimeters. So if we substitute that in, and I'm going to do it in meters so that everything is in base units, which means dividing by 1,000 or multiplying by 10 to the negative 3. And if you pop this into a calculator, you end up with a J value of 1.57 by 10 to the negative 8. And since we converted to base units, it's going to be meters to the fourth um, for that parameter. All right, so this is the same for all of our um, sections. And the only other thing we've got in this equation is G. Okay, And G is a material property um, based on what our shaft is made from. So we have A36 steel, and we were given, in fact, uh, in the question, that the shear modulus for the material is 75. Again, since the shaft is all made from the same material, then this is going to be consistent for each of the sections. So what I might do is bring out this JG out the front of the um, uh, bracket, so factorizing. And then all we're going to be left with is these uh, top lines. So I'll pop the little um, subscripts on for each of our sections and we should now be able to substitute in so J we just figured out all right it's the 1.57 by 10 to the negative 8 and we multiply it by the G value which we said was 75 and I'm going to convert everything to base units so giga means 10 to the 9 so next up, we have the torque times length. So torque for section BC, we said was 20 Newton meters, and it was in the positive direction. So we're subbing it in as a positive value. And the length of BC, we can see in here is 800 millimeters. I'm going to convert everything to base units. So that would be 0.8 in meters.
All right, next we need the torque through section CD, and we said this was negative because it was uh, spinning in the counter, um, sorry, in the negative direction. All right, so subbing, subbing this in, it's going to be minus 40 multiplied by the length of the section, and we can see this CD section is 500 mil, which is the same as 0 0.5 in meters. And then the last one, the torque through the section DA, we said was positive 40, because right, it's spinning in the positive direction or rotating in the positive direction. And the length of that section, we can read off here, is going to be 200 mil or 0 0.2 in meters. So if you pop all of this into a calculator, you end up with the answer of 0 0.00. It's about 3.4. And it's going to give us the base unit for angle, and that is not degrees, it is in fact radians. Okay, so this is our answer in radians. If you do want to convert it into degrees, that's fine. You just need to perform the conversion, which is multiplying, I'll come over here, so 0 0.0034 in radians. If you multiply it by um, 180, sorry, over pi, all right, because there is 180 degrees um, is equal to pi in radians. And this ends up giving you an answer of 0 0.19 approximately in degrees. Okay, so either of these answers is valid. And if you think about the sign, it's come out as positive um, for these. So what that's telling you is it's overall going to rotate in the positive direction. Okay, so if you apply your right hand rule here, where your thumb goes in the direction of the positive axis and your fingers tell you the positive direction, that tells you that it's going to be rotating kind of this way. So somewhere in here is going to be our phi value. Oop. All right, and it's going this way in its spinning. So that's all we've got in terms of uh, this question, and I'll see you in another video.